In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to create a geological database in SEPAC. One may ask what a database is. A database generally may be defined as an organized collection of data. And so therefore, a geological database may also be defined as the systematic collection of drill hole data. Drill hole data is the starting point of all mining projects and constitutes the basis on which feasibility studies and all reserve estimations are done. And the purpose of drill hole data is to determine where the ore body is located and to populate a block model with constraints, accurate grid and attributes. SEPAC uses a relational database. When I say a relational database, it's a database that has a collection of tables of data items, all of which is formally described and organized according to the relational model. And in creating a geological database in SEPAC, the database can contain 50 tables, and each table can have a maximum of 60 fields, so we should take note. Now, there are two ways of creating a database in SEPAC. One is creating it from raw drill hole data using the SEPAC, and the other is connecting to an already existing database, maybe a Microsoft Access database. And it is also known as mapping the database. In this tutorial, we are going to create the database from raw drill hole data. Alright, as part of any mining project which usually commences with exploration, it becomes inevitable and very relevant to gather information about the drill hole program. So when a drill hole program is executed, the relevant information gathered include the color information, the survey, that's the downhole survey, the geology and the assay. In creating a geological database, one requires two major tables, the mandatory tables and the optional tables. The mandatory tables are information about the color of the drill holes and the downhole survey information about the drill holes. The optional tables include the assays and the geology. In the builder process or creating a geological database in SEPAC, a translational table will be added to the mandatory tables, making it three. And as the builder process continues, a styles table will also be added to the database, in addition to the optional tables, making it three tables. So in all, we are going to have six tables to create the geological database from. All right. So I will create a rec directory and bring my CSV files that information about the drill hole data into them. I have the color, survey, geology, and assay information here. We go through them one after the other. I will begin by explaining the color table. The color gives the location of the hole in space. That's the actual position of the hole in reality. So in this file, we have the hole ID the north ends, that's the y coordinates, the east ends, the s coordinates, the reduced level, that's the elevation, the maximum depth at which the hole was drilled, and hole type. I also have here the survey. When a drill hole program is executed or holes are drilled, there is an activity called the downhole survey, and in this activity, a device called the reflex is descended into the hole to take readings of the dip and azimuth. And these readings are plotted in the reflex software to show how the actual hole in the field deviates from the plan. So when the device records the dip and the azimuth, it will be plotted in the software. And based on the dip and azimuth readings, it will plot it. The original hole or the planned hole will also be plotted and the deviations will be revealed. Okay, so in this table, we have the hole ID, the depth, that's the downhole survey depth the dip and the azimuth. The dip is the horizontal inclination of the hole in space. That's the angle which the drill hole makes with the air surface. Usually has value between 0 and 90. It is negative when it's below the air surface and positive when drilling underground. The azimuth is the compass direction of bearing from the north and has values between 0 and 360. So looking at this file, the hole ID 1, we have at downhole survey depth 0, the dip that the reflex device recorded was negative 45, and at the end of the hole 82.5, the dip that the reflex recorded was negative 43.5. So this will be plotted in the reflex software to show how the original hole, that's the actual hole in the foot, deviates from the plant. Okay. 
So we go to the assay table. When samples are retrieved from a drill hole, they are taken to the laboratory for metallurgical tests or assays to be run on them so that the average gold values will be reported. The metallurgical assay or test may be the fire assay or the black, that's the bulk leach extractable gold method. So in this file, we have the whole ID, sample ID, meter from meter to the average gold values and the sample type. Then we go to the geology. When samples are obtained from a drill hole, it is the honors of the geologist to record the information about the samples. And the relevant information that may be gathered include the minerals in the samples, the lithology, the radius or weathering state, the moisture content, the sample recovery, and so on and so forth. So here we have the whole ID, meter from meter to the radius and the lithology, simple table. All right, so all that we have to do is to create a rec directory and bring these CSV files into them. So I will create a new folder and give it a name, database. I will set as my rec directory. Then I'll copy the files, the CSV files and bring them into the rec directory. Okay, so here they are. So we'll begin by creating the geological database from the information gathered from the drill holes. This is SEPAC's default profile. We will set our profile to geology database so that the menus and the tool icons for geology database will be displayed. I will right click here, go to profiles and select geology database. And the menus and two icons are displayed for geology database perfect so we begin quickly go to database open new if you already had a database in the web directory we'll just click the drop down to select that but we do not have any so i will just give it a name say new database And I'm to confirm the name of the database as you can see here. New database.ddb. The .ddb is the file extension for geological database in SEPAC. So it's either I press apply to continue or I cancel to re enter the name. I would want to maintain the name new database, so I'll click apply to continue. So this is the name of the database and the database type. As initially discussed, SEPAC connects to so many types of database such as Access, Paradox, Acquire, Infusion and so on and so forth. So we click the drop down to see the list of database types that we have. We have Paradox, Paradox 5, ODBC is the Open Database Connectivity, this is General Access and these are two different versions of Access, 97 and 2000. For the purpose of our work, we are going to choose general access. Here we have stored and calculated. When stored is selected, it tells SEPAC that we have preset some coordinates or we have stored some coordinates that we want SEPAC to read from in the calculation of the Y, S, and Z coordinates for survey and samples. But we have not preset or stored some coordinates. So we will select calculated. And when you select calculated, it tells a pack that you do not have the Y, S, and Z coordinates for the survey. Thus, for the downhole survey activity, it is required that we provide the coordinates at which we do the survey, the depth at which we do the survey. But neither the reflex device can provide us with those coordinates, nor can we go into the hole to bring out those coordinates. So we will select calculated so that SEPAC will do the calculation from the color table. Likewise, the samples, the depth from and the depth to, that's the interval at which we take the samples. We are supposed to provide the coordinates for the samples, but we do not have them. We want SEPAC to do the calculation from the color table, which possesses our coordinates in reality. So we will choose calculated, not stored. So I'll click apply to continue. And on this form, I'm to load the optional tables. SEPAC accepts three types of optional tables as we initially discussed. The optional tables are the assay and the geology. Okay, but the type 
which the optional tables are we are to provide in this on this form so as you can see we have the name of the database the type of the database which we chose to access and the mandatory tables color survey and translation we have only these two color and survey as i said in the build up process sepak will add the translation table which is used to translate numeric codes okay so all that we are supposed to do is to add the optional tables which are the assay and the geology all right so we have assay here right click and add another for geology now we go to the table type there are three types of optional tables as i said earlier on we have interval tables point tables and discrete tables let me click the drop down for us to look through the list interval table requires data at an interval that's the depth from and the depth to usually associated with downhole samples the point table also requires the point to that's the depth to at which you take a value or you record a reading and it's usually associated with piezometric readings for instance if you are taking the level at which the meniscus of water has dropped down to in a measuring cylinder you take the depth to value so that's a point table now we go to the discrete table the discrete table requires data or the coordinates of a point in space usually associated with geochemical sampling that's for a stage like soil sampling the preliminary stage where you take samples at designated points it is required that you provide the y s and z coordinates and maybe append a sample id which may be unique but looking at our assay and geology table which we gathered from the drill holes we have meter from and meter to indicating that it's an interval table likewise the geology table we have meter from and meter to so they are all interval tables so we have to select intervals for the table type now i go to the time dependent section when you check a time dependent box it means that with time that value will change for instance if i check the box for the assays i want to tell sepak that when samples are retrieved from a drill and taken to the lab the average gold values that are reported will differ from when taken to a different lab but the, when you take a sample to a different lab, the good values that will be reported will not vary much. Even if there will be a difference, it will be some decimal values. And that difference may represent a nugget effect. Likewise, the geology. The rock type in the ground will continue to remain in this state, in this natural state. Unless maybe um, acted upon by some deformational processes or some external factors such as temperature and pressure otherwise by nature that's how the rock is in the ground so if the rock in the ground is felite it will continue to be felite because that's by nature how the rock is so no need checking the boxes for the time dependent i'll press apply to continue and on this form i'm to load the fills for all the tables now let me use the color to explain um, we have filled type nulls in this length number of decimal places low bound and high bounds i will explain these sessions one after the other i'll begin by explaining the field let me use the color to explain because we are on the color tab these are the fills this is the table that's the header of the table and these are the fills the whole id the northings eastings elevation maximum depth and whole type are the fills then we go to the type of field. SEPAC accepts about seven types of field. In creating a geological database, I'll use this drop down to explain. So we have character field. Character field refers to numeric values and letters which is stored as test. Let's look at the color table for instance. When you look at this whole ID, this consists of alphabets and numbers stored as test so this is a character for numeric values and letters stored as test all right then we go to the boolean the boolean refers to true or false values that's a value which is either true or false we do not have any so we will not bother ourselves with that date time also refers to the date at which a drill hole program was executed or a particular drill hole was drilled so you can add it if you only have it in your 
data or your csv file the duration also refers to the time that's the number of years or months at which a drill program took place the integer also means numeric values with no decimal places and the rel refers to numeric values with decimal places so take note the difference between the integer and rel memo is just a short piece of information that you can add to a database okay so that is it for the fold type then you go to nulls anytime a bus is checked for a particular field it tells a pack that it should report that field as blank for instance, if I check the null bus for the Y coordinate, I want to tell Serpac that I don't have it. So when it gets to that fold, it should fill that place as blank. All right, then I go to the length. The length of a fold is the number of individual characters in the particular fold. For instance, when you look at the color table, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Together with the hyphen, we have eight characters. So it is the number of individual characters for a particular field. All right. Then the number of decimal places you can adjust it to suit your preference. We have the low bounds, which is the lower limit and the high bound as upper limit. So we begin by completing the fields for all the tables. So the color, survey, translation, um, the mandatory tables, styles, assay, and geology are the optional tables so we begin by filling the fields for the color table now the whole idea will enter a character length of 30 even though it was 8 when we counted it for convenience and to be on the safer side i'll enter a longer character length so that as time goes on or drilling continues throughout the lifespan of the man um, and these csv files are edited i wouldn't have problem importing data from the csv into my database so i will enter a longer character length of 30 then here i will enter 15 15 maximum depth 15 then we get to the whole part as you can see the box for the now session has been checked for the whole part indicating that if you do not have it setback should provide that field as blank because we do not have it. That's why SEPAC has already checked the null box. And even looking at our color table, we do not have any fold called the whole path. It's rather whole type. Okay. So we we'll not worry ourselves with the character length. You can adjust the number of decimal places to suit what you want. So aside these mandatory folds, if there are other folds in our color table, we we'll just bring them to the optional folds. So let's have a look at the color table. We have the whole type. And it's a character for that's alphabet and numbers stored as test okay so i will enter that one the optional for um, whole type and it's a character for i'll enter a longer character length to be on the safer side and i'll choose the missed case if you choose lower case and as time goes on someone enters um, and uppercase characters you have problem loading or importing data from your csv all right so to be on the safer side you choose missed then we go to the survey table survey table i'll enter 30 for the whole id because whole ids are usually longer i'll enter 15 for the depth and down will survey depth and as you can see we have y x and z coordinates we do not have these coordinates as initially discussed we want separate to calculate the coordinates from the color table that's why we chose calculated in the initial stage so we will check the boxes for the null section for separate to provide those folds as blank because we do not have them then i'll enter 15 for the dip 15 for the azimuth let's see if we have other folds aside these mandatory folds we'll bring them to the optional fold section we have depth dip and original azimuth perfect so we are done Translation and styles will not bother ourselves with that. SEPAC will do its own arrangement. The styles is required to display um, the colors of the drew holes in graphics, and the translation is used to translate numeric codes. Okay, so I'll go straight to the assay, then I'll enter a character length of 30, a sample ID of 30. As you can see, the box has been checked, the null section has been checked for sample ID. 
so that means if there is no sample id in our assay table sepac will report that for that blank that's why the box has already been checked and looking at our assay table we do not have um, some areas we have we, we may not have a sample id due to uh, errors that some technicians are bound to so you have to check the box to tell sepac that if by mistake you do not append a sample id you should report that for for the sample id as blank that's why the boss has been checked okay then the depth from our enter 15. we do not have the y x and z coordinates so we want sepac to do the calculation from the color table so we will check the null bosses for sepac to provide those force as blank then i'll enter 15 for this We do not have the coordinates for the two values. Then we will bring the optional force aside these mandatory fields into this section. Let's look at the assay table. We have the average good values and the sample type. The average good values is numeric values with decimal places. So it's a, a real field and the sample type is a character field. That's alphabets and numbers stored as test. But here we have only alphabets. Beautiful. So I will enter AU average PPM. Then I will add another for sample type. Okay. Then I will change the type of fold to suit what I have in the CSV. So well, I will enter a longer character length of 20 to be on the safer side. Okay, it's A U A V. So let me edit it. All right, then I'll choose the missed case for the sample type. Now, the low bound and the high bounds for the assay. It is recommended that you go through your assay table if there are negative assay values that were reported. You enter a low bound of negative, high negative value so that you not have problem loading your database okay so we go straight to the geology table here i will enter 30 as we did 30. as you can see the boss for the now section has been checked for the sample id telling sepac that it we, if we do not have a sample id in our geology database it should fill that field as blank all right let's look at our geology table we do not have a sample id so it has been checked perfect arrangement by sepac so we will not worry ourselves with the length then i'll enter 15 here we do not have the coordinates that's why we chose calculated so i'll check the bosses for the coordinates then i'll add the other force to the optional force section looking at the geology table we have radars and lithology so I will bring them to the optional full section. Redox. Then I will add another for lithology. Let's look at what type of fields that they are. Redox is a character for lithology is also a character for. So we will maintain the character. Then I will enter a longer character length to be on the safer side. Then I will maintain the case type as missed. All right, so we are done with defining all the fields for the tables. Beautiful. So I'll click apply to create the database. And when this is done, the name that we gave it was database. It will be shown in the status area and go into our web directory. Beautiful. So this is it. We have new database. Okay. So new database has been created. The .ddb is the file extension for the geological database and the .mdb is the file extension for Microsoft Access database and that is what is going to contain our actual Druho data. The .ddb is the file that SEPAC requires only to connect to the database. So we should take note of the difference. So I will drag the Microsoft Access database into graphics for us to view the content. So as you can see, when I open the tables, 
we do not have any data in them all right we have just created it we've not imported the data okay so to view the content of the geological database file you right click on it and select edit and in this file the first line gives the name of the database and we gave it new database and the type of database is also shown here we chose general access even though we had several options to choose the type of database that we want the third line refers to the file path or directory of our work folder and these are the tables that we loaded our database from the color table and these are the characters the length of the characters 30 15 decimal places of three our rate is erin version 8 a relational database model that sepac also uses the ssi is the file extension for styles file then the low bounds and the high bounds are all here all right we also have the survey table here we have the translation table also here um, all the tables are here we have the assay table we have the geology table okay so we are done with creating the geological database so all that is left is for us to import the data that we have in the csv into the microsoft access database which will contain our actual drill hole. all right if you want to view the drill holes you can just go here and select drill holes but because we do not have any data in the microsoft access database we've not imported it yet no drill holes will be shown all right so we will import the data from the csv files into the microsoft access database and we'll do that in our next lesson